Hello, welcome back. Okay, 7.5 today, proportions and triangles. This is our last section in chapter seven. Um, then we're gonna try and do some sort of assessment, I think like a quiz. Um, I'll keep you posted on that come Wednesday. We'll prepare for it somehow. All right, um, I'm told it's Monday, so that means we have to do a lesson today. So let's get started. First things first, we have three new rules, okay? Pretty simple rules based on especially what we've been doing. They, they fit pretty well. Uh, the first one is if I have a line through a triangle that's parallel, then I now have created a proportion that will be equal. Okay, so basically what this is is doing what you did on the very first section here. It's using proportions, um, but with some new rules. So like here we notice we have two triangles, and usually we would say, yeah, these are similar triangles, uh, or at least there's a good chance they will be based on their side lengths because they share a point and they extend out. Um, but in this case, we're just saying, all right, we don't know all that. Uh, we don't know the side lengths, um, but we do know there's two parallel lines here. Well, then what we know is there is this proportion of AX to XB that's equal to CY over YB. Okay, so really this is just an absolute um, uh, blueprint for, hey, set up the problem this way. If you get a picture that looks like that, take the sides that correspond with these sides, plug them in, and solve by fish or cross multiplication. Okay, the second one is if I have three parallel lines through two lines, okay, then what I get is this side and this side create a proportion, so AB over BC, and then I have to pick the one straight across to go on top if I put AB on top, so I have DE over EF. And again, those are equal, so you're gonna see in the examples we're gonna do over here, um, there's going to be some x's, there's going to be some solving involved, you're going to have to go find a certain value, but this is how you set it up. Okay, and the last one, the last one's the weird one. Okay, the last one says that if I have an angle bisector in a triangle, okay, then my two bases, or the two, the two pieces that are cut by the angle bisector, so not the angle itself, but the opposite side, uh, those create a proportion, so I have BD over DC now. The reason I say this is the weird one is because this is where I see there being a lot of errors. If you did BD on top of DC, then you need to start with what we're going to use is the other two sides wholly of the triangle, and they will make an equal proportion. So what I need to look at is if I used B on top, I need to use B on top again, so I'll go BA. And then AC will go on the bottom because C and C are together. And that one's a little bit more of the confusing one, uh, just because the rule as far as how to set it up, which one goes where. Um, so again, just I, the trick for me is if I put B on top when I'm talking about the split side, if I put this corner on top, then I need to put this one on top of the other, so both Bs are on top. Okay, let's go through a couple examples here for you. Uh, first one, so I got matched up. One, two, and three correspond with the three hints or the three, sorry, the three rules we had. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so number one, we're looking at it, a triangle, um, and I'm not going to lie. I actually, uh, if you got this problem, you can get 100% credit by telling me not enough information. Because if you look at this picture, I'm missing something important. Okay, I told you guys it has to be a parallel line to the base. Okay. So I'll add those so this one works, okay? So now when we go to do one, I look back to my original one, AX over XB. So I'm gonna look here and go, okay, it looks like AX in this case is BD. So I'm gonna do BD over uh, XB. So in this case, XB is DA. So BD over DA is equal to uh, CY. So CY, so that's gonna be CE. So CE over EA. Okay, and I take the time to set it up with the letters, not plugging in the values yet, just making sure I have everything matching the original picture. Um, now I can plug things in. Well, BD is X plus one, DA is 12, A, or CE is X, and EA is nine. Now, we have stuff we've worked with a lot before, uh, just solving a proportion, again, um, 
Careful here, fish method gonna be a little tough because you have two variables. I would say cross multiply. So if I cross multiply here and here, I get 9x plus 9, because making sure I distributed that 9, equals 12x. Now we're finally back to just an algebra problem. Subtract 9x, subtract 9x, 9 equals 3x, so 3 equals x, okay? And as usual, I didn't write the actual question up because there's multiple ways I could ask this. I could tell you, hey, what's x? We'd be done right now. I could say, what's the length of CE? Well, then you'd have to plug it in. Well, in this case, really easy because CE is just x. So therefore, um, I would just be 3 still. Or I could ask you, like, what BD is. Uh, 3 plus 1, BD would be 4, okay? So that's how you do that, just setting up the proportion. I'm actually going to scoot you guys a little bit closer here so you can get a little better view. Okay, hopefully that's visible to you guys. Um, all right, so that's our first example, okay? I trust that we can all do proportions by now. The only thing new about this section is how to set it up based on a picture you see. So don't get confused once you have it set up. That's something we've done that's not a new task, okay? Uh, number two, so now we have three parallels. Three parallels through two transversals. So that's this rule right here. Okay, that says I can create uh, the two segments on the same side, make a proportion. So the two segments on the same side. Uh, so I also need to look at this picture. The book actually makes this a word problem. I decided not to. Uh, I look here and I say, okay, there's extra information. So what pieces do I not need? Well, if you look at our base or our original one, and you look at the fact that there's an X here, so I'm gonna need this one obviously, and I have two sides that are both there, so that's gonna work. 6.4 is actually just a mislead, okay? Extra information, you don't need it. So don't think you should have five numbers in your proportion, not possible. So our proportions are gonna go, okay, so I'm looking here and it looks like same side over same side. So this is like A, B, B, C. So it's gonna be X over eight, okay? Similarly, over there where we had uh, F, E, E, D, so all on the same side, I need to be careful that if I picked X first, if I picked X first, I need to start with this piece, so 9 over 7.2, okay? And now, this one's a little nicer because there isn't multiple X's, so I actually can just use fish method, so I'm gonna get out my calculator. Let's see here, and there's a decimal in there, so that means you guys are pretty free game to use a decimal. Uh, so eight times nine is 72 divided by 7.2. If I could use my calculator correctly, 72 divided by 7.2, 10, okay? So x equals 10, okay? Again, you'll notice once we're to here, I've had you doing this all chapter. The hard part was looking here, matching it up with those sides, which one goes with which, how to stack them, how to make sure they're set across from the right piece. Um, after that, fish method, cross multiplication, whichever one you were comfortable with, I'll never make you do it one way or the other. Okay, third example right here. Um, we have a triangle. If you can't tell down here, I put the markings so that is an angle bisector, so we have enough information. So then I have to look back and think. Okay, um, and remember, if this ever happens to you on homework or IXL does this and you want to draw it out, no, you are always welcome to put in labels. Okay, so put in labels. Um, if I was smart, I would have labeled it the right way up so it looks identical to the picture. I did not, so I'm gonna have to adjust as I go. Okay, uh, so there, we talked about, you wanna start with your two base pieces, so B, D, D, C on that picture. On our picture, that looks like it's A, D over D, B. So I'm gonna have A, D over D, B. Okay, so that was, that's here, that's my BD over DC. So that for me was ADDB, okay? So now that, that hint I gave you of telling you like you gotta be careful, I started with AD. So when it comes to the other sides of the triangle, if A's on top here, I want A on top again. So I'm gonna go AC over BC, okay? So B's on bottom again, C's on top. So there's that matching letter. Of course, there's always gonna be one letter that's different we're not using the exact same segments, okay? 
In this case, I end up with 10 over 18 equals a C, so 12 over X. Okay, another nice one, not multiple variables. Uh, setup's done pretty easy. You don't even have to show me work. You know, I usually, if you do this and I didn't do a good job of it over here, I told you I do love to see your work where you at least show me like, hey, I did fish method. So here I'm gonna draw the little symbol, fish method. 12 times 18 divided by 10, 21.6. Okay, 21.6. So, there's our lengths, okay? Um, those are three examples of how to use these rules. Again, I don't overthink it, use them as a blueprint. Very rarely do I tell you like, hey, just memorize the process. Usually I want you to like know in depth what you're doing. This is a section where it works pretty well just to go, hey, I have this blueprint, match everything up, make it look the same plug in the pieces I know, okay? Don't get stuck on this one. Uh, don't overthink it, take your time. For now, we'll go with no homework. I just want you to get these notes done. We'll come back Wednesday and I'll give you some practice problems on this as well as probably something to prepare for some assessment. If I had to guess right now what I wanna do, we're probably gonna do a Google form uh, type quiz, which means, of course, I can't see a lot of your work, which is gonna be tough. Um, and also, everything's gonna be open note, open book. I can't really keep you from doing that. So, uh, otherwise, have a good day. Kept this one nice and short for you. Enjoy your Monday. Let me know if you have questions. I did finally have a Zoom meeting with some people over IXLs they were stuck on, um, or if you're confused about the activity. Whatever you need, let me know. I'm more than happy to put together a group, uh, group Zoom and get as many people on there as we can and answer some questions. Otherwise, hope you're having a good time. Hope you're staying busy, finding something to do. I will see you all on Wednesday. Have a good one.